the SRA Hershey's Cup Series. Welcome everybody to Rockingham, North Carolina, North Carolina Speedway, or more commonly known as The Rock. We're getting ready for 21 drivers, the same 21 drivers we've had pretty much for the last, oh, I don't know, five, six, seven weeks at least since All-Star Race break, and they are going to be going for seven available spots in today's event. Now, there are two drivers coming into uh, this knockout qualifying session that are definitely a top story. I have not seen either one of them come off pit road. As a matter of fact, there's one of them coming off pit road right now. So we're actually just going to jump to him as we're going to be documenting the story surrounding himself and another driver. Joshua Michaels and Michael Norman have both been either qualifying or not qualifying each week. It seems like whenever the 10 makes the show, the three fails to make the show, and vice versa. Now what these two have been doing is swapping 36th in the point standings between the two of them. The only problem with the fact that they've been kind of on and off with making the races, as you see Michael Norman just now coming onto the racetrack, the problem with that is they both, yeah, they're taking the 36th spot in the point standings, but in that amount of time that they've been battling amongst themselves for 36th in points, 35th in the standings, the goal they're shooting for, currently held by Austin the Plant, now has an 80-point advantage between himself and the now 36th in standings, Joshua Michaels. So, these two have got to find a way to both make the races in the next couple of weeks here, because 80 points, that can be cut down in the span of three races, but they got to make the race first. Right now, Joshua Michaels is fourth fastest on track. Make it now 5th fastest, Norman 4th fastest is John Cittadino. And the 72 is currently the fastest car on track. I believe he was the first one off pit road. 23.287 his fastest lap. And he just cut it down by a thousandth, 23.286. And we saw last week at Coca-Cola Speedway just how important a thousandth can be. Our closest finish of the season between Mason Powers and Joshua Lee, 3 one thousandths of a second. And Brandon Gonzalez has jumped to the top of the leaderboard, 23.259. That's a fast lap, and Cittadino just bested his lap, 23.261. And Norman just hit the ones, 23.113. Galligan also jumping up to second, 23.253. And Stephen Paul the third just hit the ones, 23.174. Right now, it would be Norman, Pollard, Galligan, Gonzalez, Cittadino, Fitzwater, and Chris Dow just jumped up to 7th, 23.310. It's been quite a while since that 46 car has made a race, and he was, at one point, 35th in the standings. Cody Lamas just jumped up in the top 7, and Sam McMillan just jumped up into the top 7. That displaces both Zachary Fitzwater and Chris Dow, but Dow just jumped back up to 5th, 23.258. We're looking at the fastest on track. Michael Norman, his last lap was a 23.020. This time, three tenths slower as he's working around Joshua Michaels. And Zach Flickinger just jumped up to the third position. I believe Flickinger might be the only driver who's yet to make his debut this season. And now he's up in the top three. Jace Nelson's now up in fifth. And Cittadino Sam McMillan are now out with a little less than a minute remaining. We got Norman, Pollard, Flickiger, Nelson, Galligan, Dowd. Oh, wait a minute. Dowd just got knocked out because who jumped up? McMillan just jumped up. So now Dowd is outside looking in. And Dallas McIntosh actually eliminated Brandon Gonzalez out of the top seven. He's up to fifth is the 16 car. I think Norman, Pollard, and Flickiger, they're all good to move into the main event. But it's going to be close between McMillan. Whoop. And McIntosh just jumped into the 23-0s. He's up to second fastest, 23.096. Galligan is in the danger zone. If someone jumps in the top seven, he's going to get eliminated. 15 seconds remaining. It's Norman, McIntosh, Pollard, McMillan, Flickiger, Nelson, and Galligan. Five 1,000s separate Sean Galligan from eighth place Chris Dowd. Four one, I make that six 1,000s between Galligan and Brandon Gonzalez. And the session would be complete now. Is anyone gonna make a last minute charge? 
Nelson Galligan at this point they're already in. Nobody back here improved. What about in this group? Did anybody jump up in this group? Doesn't look like it. The only one that would have been able to do anything would have been either Brandon Gonzalez or Austin Guype, and it doesn't look like they did. And nobody else improved their lap time that time around. So Michael Norman will be the fastest in knockout qualifying. He'll make the show along with Dallas McIntosh, Stephen Paul with the third, Sam McMillan. Zach Flickiger will finally make his debut. Jace Nelson, he's in, and so is Sean Galligan. So just missing out. Driver, by five one thousandths, Chris Dowd. By six one thousandths, Brandon Gonzalez. By eight one thousandths, John Citadino. And then Seth Cole, Cody Lamas, Johnny Gardner, Zachary Fitzwater, Joshua Michaels. Again, Norman makes the show. Michaels misses it. Those two are going to continue to swap 36 in points, and that's not going to help either one of them in their quest to get into the top 30 in points. Both of them former winners this season. Norman at Dover, Michaels at Pocono. And they got to get in the top 30 for that win to count towards a wild card spot. Joseph Srigley, 16th. He's not going to make the show. Neither will Acovito, Michaels, McIntyre, Qualls, or Gipe. So we have our seven drivers. Let's get ready now to go points racing here at The Rock. And hello there, everybody, and welcome here as we get ready for race number 19 of the season here in the NSRA Hershey's Cup Series. We are getting ready to go racing here in Rockingham, North Carolina at North Carolina Speedway. 40 laps away to us here today. Most of the races that I've run here, these races have been relatively calm as far as wrecks are concerned. There usually is quite a bit of passing for the lead, and more often than not, it comes down to fuel strategy. So we'll see if that's going to be the case in today's event. Now, I'm not going to say that this has been the closest points battle that we've had this entire season. The closest one actually was heading into Talladega a few weeks ago, but the points are quite close at the moment amongst the top eight in the standings coming into today's event. As a matter of fact, three of them that are atop the standings in the top three are starting in the top five today. And we're going to show them to you right now. Ken Eddington lines up on the pole position. He is second in the point standings coming into today's race, three points out of the points lead. He will start alongside of his teammate in the 27, Joshua Circuli, two-time winner this season, who is third in the points. He's only five points out of the top position in the standings. Then you got Stephen Paul with the third. He's looking for his second win of the season. Still trying to work his way towards the top 30 in points. And alongside of him is Emmanuel Hartnett in the 83. Also still looking for his first win of the season. There is your points leader coming into this race. Jeremy Jones took the points lead over after last week at Coca-Cola. But as I said, he's only three points ahead of pole sitter Kean Eddington. Five points ahead of outside pole sitter Joshua Circuli. The points are really, really close. He'll start off alongside of his Joe Gibbs Racing teammate, Cooper Siron in the 19. Making up row three is going to be, or making up row four, I should say, is going to be Daniel Voiles in the Mercedes-Benz alongside of Pichu London, who has actually fallen outside the top ten in points. He's looking for a good run to move himself back into the top ten in point standings here today. And then completing row five is going to be Sean Galligan, raced his way in and knockout qualifying. Alongside of him, two-time winner Jake Baskinger comes into this race sixth in the point standings, only 13 points out of the top position. Let's take a look at the rest of your starting lineup for today's event. One driver is making his Hershey's Cup Series debut, finally. That's the number 01 U.S. Army Chevrolet of Zach Flickiger. Looks like he's going to be starting close to the rear of the field here. There he is. We'll see how he does here in his debut, and he becomes the final driver to make a points-paying event. Uh, and so now every driver that is currently running in the series will have taken a points-paying green flag. We're going to get the command to fire the engines, and then I'll fill you in on what the points look like coming into today's race and how close they are. But for now, let's go down trackside. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. There we go, command to fire the engines being given by the one, the only, the king, Richard Petty. As the 43 drivers will roll off behind the Hershey's Cup Series pace car. Now we already gave you the top three in points, 
Jeremy Jones, the points leader, starting off fifth. Three points over Kean Eddington, starting in the pole position. Five points over Joshua Sirkley, starting in third or in the second place. Mason Powers, back-to-back -back winner for the past two weeks at Tennessee and Coca-Cola. He is fourth in points now, only 11 points out. Benjamin Miles is fifth, 12 points out. Jake Baskinger is sixth, 13 points back. And then seventh and eighth in points are Rocco Twyman and Tim Walsh. They are 19 points back apiece. Ninth in points is Joshua Lee. And tenth in points is Daniel Bouchard. As here we go, getting ready to go green for 40 laps of racing here at The Rock. Green flags out, we're underway here at Rockingham. <clears throat> the two wildcard spots at the moment would be held by James Richardson with one win, 11th in the point standings. And the second wildcard spot held by JT Bryant, one win and 13th in points. Let's see if we can complete the first lap under green. And it looks like we will do so. So hopefully that's a sign of things to come that we will run this race with some good green flag runs. And Joshua Circuli, not willing to wait. He let his teammate lead the lap, but now he wants a bonus point for leading the lap, but not able to make the move at least this time, heading into three. Now he's gonna make it, coming out of turn four. Drag race to the stripe. Which one of them is gonna lead it? That was close between the RCR teammates, and it says Kean Eddington did lead that lap, but Circuli, with the inside advantage, will go to the front now. Everything really spread out closer to the back. I'm looking to see. We still are under green, though, so... Apparently, they're just giving each other room as the battle's on for second. Stephen Pollard the third to the inside of Kean Eddington for that spot. Stephen Paul the third, as I mentioned, outside the top 35 in points, trying to get himself to 30th in the points, James. Former winner this season at Texas, and maybe a second win could help his chances of getting up closer to the top 30. If he gets into the top 30 in points with two victories, the only other drivers that have two victories this season are Joshua Circuli, Jake Baskinger, and Mason Powers. And so that would help put him in a... Oh, and sorry, Jeremy Jones. Jeremy Jones, also a two-time winner. And so that would put Stephen Paul with the third in a good position to maybe get one of those wild card spots. But he's got to get to the top 30 in points first. Right now, Joshua Circuli out in front. He could become our first three-time winner as the battle is on for second place between a couple of go-or-go -go homers that raced their way in. Sean Galligan now will go for the second position. Jeremy Jones running right there, currently in the fifth position, now going for fourth off of Stephen Paul at the third. The 33 has led a lap. The 27 right now is out in front leading laps. Jeremy Jones needs to get his Chevrolet, or his, uh, yeah, Chevrolet. Nicely done, Seth. Needs to get his Toyota up to the front to lead a lap to counter the bonus points received already by the 33 and the 27, who are trying to run Jeremy Jones down for the points lead. We're looking at Emmanuel Hartnett who cleared Sean Galligan for second and now is beginning to try and reel in Joshua Circuli for the lead, and he's right there. Tristan Folks just jumped up into the top five, bypassing Stephen Paul with the third for that position. And Hartnett, he's going to be on the back door of Circuli, heading down the front straightaway here. Here he comes to the inside. He'll be to the inside, heading into one. Can he get the lead coming out of two? Circuli's not able to battle back on the high side, and Hartnett will clear Circuli for the top position. Now Sean Galligan trying to look for second place off the Menard Chevrolet. And Emmanuel Hartnett will lead his first lap of the day in the Cosmo Motors Toyota Camry. Let's find Emmanuel Hart, or not Emmanuel Hart, not Mason Powers in the 44. Oh my goodness. The driver who went back to back the past two weeks at Restrictor Plate Racing, something I've never seen before, is all the way in dead last. Now, whether this is strategy or not, I could not say. We are more than likely going to have pit stops in this race but he's now gone to 41st, putting John Arndt back in 42nd. But man, 
Not the best of runs for either of the AS Racing Machines there. It's Carson Scott in 40th. His teammate John Art right now running 42nd. Battle on for the second position. Sean Galligan to the inside of Joshua Circuli. Tristan Folks right behind him. Tweenix Racing has yet to go to victory lane this season, and how would it be if one of the go or go home drivers out of that team wins the race? And Sean Galligan. Seth Cole did not make the race. Trent Dunham and Dylan Poteet are not up in the top 10 at this point in time. Well, we looked at Mason Powers, another driver that's been really hot the last couple of weeks with a second place finish at Tennessee, a fourth place finish last week at Coca-Cola is the Audi of Anthony McCrory, who is very slowly making strides towards getting to the top 10 in points. Right now, he is running in the 12th position behind Noah Cars, who, by the way, also, we got to mention Noah Cars. Um, he was way down in the 30th position last week, heading into uh, that race at Coca-Cola. Well, he had a good enough finish. He's now up to 28th in points, so he's starting to work his way back up in the point standings, but he's got to get up to... Ryan Acosta, and then he's got to get up to JT Bryant. Bryant is 13th in points. Ryan Acosta is somewhere around 18th in the standings, I think. So Noah Cars has got to continue to fight his way up there with that one victory to get himself into a wild card position. But right now, looking good. Almost into the top 10. Right now, scored in 11th spot. He might actually be in 10th place as he got around Daniel Voyles. We'll see if that's the case. Yep, he's now in 10th. Mason Wood right now running in the 8th position. Just ahead there, three wide. Blaine Keys, Jeremy Jones, and Stephen Pollard the third. Rocco Twyman right now scored in 9th. Comes into this race 19 points out of the points lead. Tied for 7th in the standings. Solid outing for that Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota. Jeremy Jones. Right now still running in that fifth position. That's what he's got to do. As Hartnett continues to lead. One driver that really faded from view was the 33. Our pole sitter, Kean Eddington. He's now back in the 18th position. He just lost that spot, I believe, now to Austin LaPlante. Oh, and he just got the wall. So apparently a very ill-handling race car at the moment for the 33 of Kean Eddington. He's dropped back to 20th. He's about to lose that to Dylan Pokti, 21st place. Probably will go to Richardson in this turn as he's to the inside. Kean Eddington has a handful apparently in that 33 car as he nearly went up and tagged the wall again. How about the guy, the driver making his debut here today? He was starting close to the rear of the field, Zach Flickinger. He's made a bit of strides up through the field right now, running in the 34th position, just trying to get used to this kind of racing. It's the first time he's been on track with 41 other drivers. As he's been constantly trying to qualify his way into the main event, he's finally here, and I guess he doesn't want to really force the issue just yet. Manuel Hartnett better look in his rearview mirror because I'm seeing his lead getting chipped away bit by bit by... The 17 of Tristan Folks. he was only about six tenths back last time, and wait a minute. Oh, I thought maybe Folks might have come to pit road. And the gap opened up a little bit that time now. Hartnett, apparently realizing that his lead was being cut into, picks up the pace, and he now opens the gap between himself and the Houston Rockets Ford. Galgan riding in the third position, circularly right there in fourth. Battle on for fifth. Blaine Keyes is starting to fight his way up to the front. He got around Stephen Paul with the third. He got around Mason Wood. He's now going to the inside of Jeremy Jones. That 48 car is coming alive here late in the season. And he will now move into the top five in the fifth position. Mason Wood filling in that gap. He'll take sixth place away from Jeremy Jones. And now the 18 might get freight trained. He's now going to lose a spot to Stephen Paul with the third. Drop him now back to the eighth position. Might be able to find a spot in line right in front of his Joe Gibbs Racing teammate, Rocco Twyman. We'll see if Twyman lets him in. And looks like he's going to allow him to stay right there. Yep. Leon Alvarez. He's now moving into the top 10, taking that 10th position away from Jake Baskinger. 
That's another driver that actually the last couple of weeks, now he's hit a bit of a bumpy road in the past few weeks, but he's another driver who is outside the top 10 with an opportunity to maybe move into the top 10 in points if he continues up good runs like what he's having right now. And here comes that Audi of Anthony McCrory right now, 12th trying to run down Baskinger for the 11th position. He is having a really, really good last couple of weeks is that 61 team. And it seems to be ever since they moved from the RS4 to the now updated RS5 for his Audi machine. I'll tell you what though, Emmanuel Hartnett, he has checked out. He has a 1.4 second lead this last time around. It's now one and a half seconds between himself and Tristan Folks. As a matter of fact, Tristan Folks has now been reeled in by Joshua Circuli and Sean Galligan. And it's a three-way battle for the second position, all going on behind Emmanuel Hartnett. I'm trying to remember, there was another race that Emmanuel Hartnett dominated. I want to say it was Richmond, and I think he had to pit with two to go. And we still don't know if maybe pit stops are going to come into play in this race. So Hartnett not taking any chances, opening up as big a distance as he can. Galligan battling side by side for third place with Circuli. He'll take the spot now. Circuli back to fourth, and here comes that 48 car. That 48 car has been really, really strong late in this race, picking up a lot of spots. Has work driven his way into the top 10, into the top five, and now Galligan got a little wide off that corner. Does that mean these drivers are slowing down for pit stops, or did Galligan just get a little tight through that turn? Nope, nobody coming to pit road, but Galligan's going to lose third place back to Joshua Circuli, and now fourth place to Blaine Keyes, and Blaine Keyes wants more. He's going to try and go for third, but he can't get to the inside yet on the 27. Now he's there, and he's going to try and go for that third position. My goodness. That 48 car is strong. There is no doubt about it. Mason Wood riding all by his lonesome in the sixth position, and then there's a big gaggle of cars back here. Seventh place, Jeremy Jones. Eighth place, Stephen Paul the third. Ninth place now will be Leon Alvarez as he moves by and puts Rocco Twyman back to 10th. Jake Baskinger right there in 11th. And where did they? Oh, there's McCurry. I was going to say, he all of a sudden disappeared. Here comes Ryan Acosta trying to work his way up in the standings, get back into the second wild card position just ahead. Wild card spot number one holder coming into this race. James Richardson in 14th. How about 35th in points? Austin the Plant, solid run in 13th right now. And how about Charles Sanford? Nice run for the driver out of Retro Racing Enterprises. Right now scored in 12th. But all this going on about two and a half seconds behind the leader, Emmanuel Hartnett. He has checked out. He is gone, and he's hoping that he's not going to have to pit. Battled for second, Tristan Foltz, Blaine Keys. We've gone clean and green so far. There will be eight to go when we hit the stripe next time by battle. Going to go on for fourth place. These two have been swapping positions this entire race, it seems. Circuli and Galligan, but both still running in the top five. The best battle seems to be going on back here, though, just inside the top ten. Pollard in eighth, Jones in ninth. Or make that Pollard seventh, Jones in eighth. Ninth and 10th right now, Alvarez and Baskinger, but you got LaPlante, you've got Twyman, Richardson, McCrory, Sanfer, Ryan Acosta, all in this mix. All trying to get their way into the top 10. This is where the good battling really is going on at the moment. Right now, Alvarez is in the 10th position. I believe Rocco Twyman just got the wall off of four, and now he's losing valuable positions is the 11 car. And LaPlante now will crack the top 10 as he'll move by Alvarez for that 10th position. Alvarez back to 11th and now falls into the clutches of James Richardson. Ryan Acosta right there in 13th, 14th, Charles Sanford. Twyman back to 15th, McCurry there in 16th place. And here comes Richardson to the inside of Leon Alvarez just ahead, battle for 9th. LaPlante to the inside of Baskinger. And now Richardson goes for 10th. The door left open, and he'll go for the top 10 spot underneath of Baskinger. 
Richardson in the 2016 Ford Fusion, Baskinger and a number of the other Ford drivers in the 2015 Fusions. Wow, there was almost some contact back there between Sam McMillan and uh, William Brock, but they settled it out, and now Alvarez gets kicked up to the high side along with Baskinger, and Ryan Acosta will drive on through. That will move him, I believe, up to the 11th spot. Sanford now going to go for 12th underneath of Alvarez. Meanwhile, the battle is still on for the fourth position. Galligan has it, Circuli wants it. Lane Keyes has moved to second, and John Arndt has now fallen a lap down. Emmanuel Hartnett beginning to catch up with drivers on the tail end of the lead lap. There's three laps to go, two and a half as he's on the back straightaway. Emmanuel Hartnett has definitely dominated this race. There is no doubt about that. And I'm just hoping these drivers aren't going to have to pit in the closing stages of this thing. I'm hoping maybe they can just make it the entire way because pit stops would definitely mess this entire race up. There's no doubt about that. Emmanuel Hartnett, 2.7 seconds between himself and second place Blaine Keys. last time by. The white flag is going to be displayed for the Cosmo Motors Toyota Camry of Emmanuel Hartnett. Just four more corners, one more time around. 2.6 seconds in hand over Blaine Keys. And a now lap machine between himself and the 48 to boot. Through turns three and four. What a dominating performance for one Emmanuel Hartnett. He'll capture his first win of the season, taking the checkered flag here today at North Carolina Speedway. You got to think that was a kind of close the deal thing from Richmond for that 83 team. That was a dominating performance by Emmanuel Hartnett here today. Nobody ever came close to him. He just pulled away from everybody during the course of that race, and we went green flag, coast to coast, from green flag to checkered flag. Standings should be official now. They are indeed. Emmanuel Hartnett will capture his first win of the season. We'll have to see where this situates him in the wild card battle. I'm not really certain where Hartnett came into today's race as far as the point stands are concerned. So he could be one of those drivers late in the season putting his name in the hat for a potential wild card spot. But depending on where he is in the points, maybe the win moved him into the top 10 in the standings. We'll have to see. Blaine Keys, solid run for him in second place. He and Hartnett were pr undoubtedly probably the two strongest cars of the day. Tristan Folks hangs on for third. Galligan and Circuli battled for that fourth spot, but Galligan will keep it. Circuli will finish in fifth place, though, today. And he came in five points behind Jeremy Jones, also led a lap, and Jones did not. Call me crazy, but I think we may have a tie atop the point standings again between Joshua Circuli and Jeremy Jones, a couple of multiple-time winners this season. We'll have to see if that's going to be the case. Mason Wood, solid outing for him in sixth place. He was just all by his lonesome for the second half of that race. Stephen Paul at the third, great run for him. He'll finish seventh. Eighth place for Austin the Plant, a well-needed run for the guy who came in 35th in points. Jeremy Jones, who I believe is going to be a co-points leader now with Joshua Circuli, still a solid run in ninth. And James Richardson, I believe this top 10 run moves him back into the top 10 in the standings as well. Ryan Acosta is going to get 11th. This may move him up back into the wild card picture. Anthony McCurry in 12th. I don't know, maybe this will move Anthony McCurry into the top 10 in points. Charles Sanford, a solid run 13th, 14th for Sam McMillan, 15th place for Leon Albury, 16th for Jake Baskinger. Those drivers had some really good tooth and nail battling just inside and outside of the top 10 this entire race. William Brock, I believe he started near the rear of the field. He'll get 17th today. Rocco Twyman fell back to 18th. Noah Cars in 19th and Cooper Siren. Complete your top 20 to look on down through the rest of your finishing results. Pulse or Key and Eddington dropped all the way down to 27th for the finish of this race. Mason Powers, two-time winner, back-to-back -back winner in the last two weeks, finishes 39th here today. That's not what he needs. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to drop him outside of the top 10 in points or not, but we'll see. Uh, JT Bryant, who came into today's race 
uh, holding the second wild card spot, 38th place here today. And Joshua Lee, who's been in the top 10 in the point standings for most of this season, 41st today. This may drop him outside the top 10 in points, as well as Daniel Bouchard, 36th place today. He came in 10th in the standings. So those two may drop outside the top 10 in points. We may have a couple of new faces up inside the top 10 in the standings heading into next week. And then Zach Flickinger, boy, tough break for him. He was trying to have a great run in his debut race here in Hershey's Cup Series. He was up as high as 34th place, but 35th is where he'll officially finish out his first start of the season. So, Emmanuel Hartnett, where is he going to be in this championship battle, this chase potentiality? What are his chances with this victory here today? We'll find out as the season progresses. Next week, we're going to be heading to one of my favorite road courses, Watkins Glen International Raceway. The Hershey's Cup Series will be taking a right turn in our second road course stop of the season. What's going to take place at the Glen? Can't wait to find out. But thank you all so much for watching today's race here from Rockingham. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to become part of the crew today. Once again, congratulations to Emmanuel Hartnett on the win. We'll show you your full results on down through 42nd position. We went clean and green the entire 40 lap event. And we will now show you your point standings heading into next week at the Glen. You have been watching a production of the NCRA Offline Racing at its best.